several announcements today. I wrote them down. <laughs> we have the crop walk today. Carrie, Beverly, Michelle are walking. Anyone else walking today? Me. <gasps> Another person. Yes. Carrie behind me. She just meet me. Prince if you guys can, anybody, any small donation, just find one of them, $5, $3, $1, a cup of coffee, whatever. It's a tremendous, tremendous thing. It helps us so much with the food pantry. When we used to work at the food pantry, there were boatloads of food we would get from this. So anything you could do would be great. Don't forget your cards. They'll be picked up. Any prayer requests you have. Your cell phones, if you could, please turn them off. And the last thing is the rummage sale. It's in your bulletin. Coming up, another great, great fundraiser here. So please, if you can volunteer, see Carol, help out. Come that day. Fantastic. Serve food. Great stuff for sale. It's just awesome. And that's the announcements. Please stand for the call to worship. We come to you, God, in this time of worship. In our day of trouble, we seek you, our living God. Let us reflect upon God's amazing grace. In our days of sorrow, we seek the living God. Let us remember God's wondrous deeds of mercy. To the, taste, to the taste, sweeter, sweeter than, than honey. honey. Let them Let be, be our, our daily meditation and our study. Give us, Give us ears, ears to hear, for we marvel at your, your instruction. instruction. 
Train, train us, us in righteousness, righteousness grant, grant us patience, patience and, and persistence, and equip and us for every good work. Inspire our faith and give us voices to proclaim your message. Guide our feet, keep us from every false way, for you alone speak the words of life. Amen. Amid the sweetness of the praise songs and that powerful, beautiful opening hymn, we now come together for a moment of quiet and silence. To go a little deeper, praying that God will open up our minds and hearts to where we need to change, where we need to repent, where we need to be wide open to the graces that God is going to give to us. Let's take a few moments in that quiet to ask the Lord in his spirit to descend into our hearts. Lord God, the silence itself is sweet. We thank you because in that silence when we're at worship, we recognize your presence. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for allowing us to be here to develop a deeper, more profound relationship with you and with one another. We thank you for your peace, which we will now share. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Peace be with you. I want to welcome some old, Robert and Robert Jr. from Nugent and the daughter uh, Leon, uh, Elena and Haley. Yes, thank you for being here. And everybody else that's here, we're just grateful that you're here. Let's extend peace to one, one another. holding everybody's names in my heart, and hopefully on my lips, so I can remember you. Yeah. I want to ask you one thing. Can you think back when you were happy? Something happened recently that you just felt happy about? Shaking everybody's hand. Shaking everybody's hand, yes. Wow, that's good. That's good. During the piece, she comes forward and smiles. Daphne? Our cousins come over to visit. Your cousins come over and visit. Oh, that's good. So family's getting together. That makes, that makes you happy. How about you, Mason? Huh? McCall. Thank you. Hugging people. Hugging people. Hugging people. Makes you happy. Wow. How about you, Mason? Can you think of anything? No, OK. Not on your, not on your, your radar right now. Well, Jesus has, when he got together with his first friends, his disciples, they all sat together in a circle, something like this, and he had some beautiful phrases about happiness. But even more than happiness, he had something else he wanted to share. So the first one is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's see if we can unpack that for you guys. Um, do you ever get yourself blessed? Does anybody bless you in your family? Some, maybe a different. Yeah. When you sneeze. When you sneeze, yeah. yes. God bless, thank you. Thank you, God bless you. What does that mean? Because like 
maybe when you sneeze, like you stop blinking for a moment. You do. Everything kind of stops. Everything kind of stops for a moment. Your heart stops for a little moment there. And so the blessing is, oh, may God bless you. May God continue to give you breath. May God continue to keep your heart going. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, there are certain cultures, right, peoples, that they, their parents bless them. You know, when they say, they, in Spanish, they say, bendición, blessing. There, there's a desire. I always see what blessing is because what blessing is somehow a very, very godly energy comes down so that we are, we're able to do more things. So Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. What does that mean? Well, you all know what it means. What does it mean to be poor? What's, Mason, what's poor? To not have any food or be homeless, Daphne? Um, to not have as much money as most people. Yeah, yeah, or maybe even nothing, you know. Uh, to not have as much. They're poor. They're dependent. Yeah. You got that? Yeah. What does poor in spirit, what would that add to it, do you think? Charity. Charity, yes. In other words, when we're poor, we're very, very grateful, and that stirs up a desire to be kind to other people. There's also another sense. Did you ever get asked by God before you were born, would you like to come into existence, to be born? Isn't that a strange question? Yeah, it's a strange What makes it strange? How about this? We weren't around to be asked, right? That God didn't say to Allison, hey, Allison, would you like to be born in New Jersey? Would you like, <laughs> would you like to be born uh, in this year or next year? Or when would you like to be born? We weren't asked, right? Why? Because it just happened. It just happened. It just happened. We weren't around. God didn't consult us and say, Daphne, when would you like to live? Because we didn't even exist. So to be poor in spirit means we got nothing to add to whether we would come into being born or not. It's a pure, pure, free gift that God gave to each one of us when we were conceived in our mommy's womb, in our belly, and then born some years later, no? So that's really, to, to be poor in spirit means we got nothing to contribute to whether we would come into existence. And that, for me, helps me to really say, wow, God thought it would be a great idea that Mason and McCowan, <laughs> why do I, McCarran? Mikkel, Mikkel, and Daphne and Elsie. I thought it would be a really nice idea. So when you are happy giving the greeting of peace with your smile and your kindness, anybody here get happy when Allison greeted her? Yeah. So we all get happy when we just love each other. And when we express it with our smiles and things, it's like, wow, this is what we're doing so that we can be happy. But it's a, even more than being happy, we're being blessed. We're being showered by God's goodness and God's, uh, God's kindness. And so that's what I wanted to list. And what I'm going to do with the, with the rest of the, there's eight of these be, Beatitudes, they're called. They're called they're the Be Happies, you know. There are eight of them, and I'm going to talk about that with the rest of the folks. But I want to thank you for coming up here this morning and for sharing with this. Macau, and Mason, and Daphne, and Allison. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Okay. Our scripture reading today is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. I make pastors send me my readings every time beforehand because I want to see it, and I want to read it and kind of review it. So I was reviewing this, and Paul wrote this 
to his favorite people, the Philippians. He loved these people. This is one of his first churches that he converted. But what I found awesome when you listen to this, you have to keep this in your mind. Paul was in prison when he wrote this. And imminently, he felt he was going to be killed. So just listen to his words from a man sitting in a prison, staring at death. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of, worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. The God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been suggesting that we sit for the gospel, which is a little bit against the tradition of standing out of respect for the gospel. But when Jesus presented the Sermon on the Mount, he sat down with his disciples. They sat around him. And these eight beatitudes, these eight blessings, are like the springboard for his entire gospel. And I'm entitling my sermon, Back to Basics, with all that's going on in the world, for the violence and the suffering that it's even hard to imagine or even want to even see what we need, the blessing of these Beatitudes, to offset the anger, the hostility, that's going on. When we allow, as I'll read these blessings slowly and I'll go through them one by one, when we allow the blessings that flow down from heaven into our hearts to become real and to live it, it offsets the violence in the world. So here they are. The fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, 
verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you, you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I just happened to see Barbara there. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome. And Sean, thank you for being here. My first ministry as a young priest was 50 years ago. I lived in a large community and one of my dear friends and a spiritual director was a man by the name of Cyril Schomer. I have an image of him. His smile was just incredible. When he was a young man, he was the concert master for the Minneapolis Symphony Orchestra, a very accomplished violinist. And he joined the Jesuits. And at that time, you give up everything including his violin, until some years later, the people in charge said, you know what, you have a gift. Let's get back and share it again. So he did. When he was a young man, he was playing golf, and he was hit in his eye with a golf ball, and he became blind in one eye. Later in his life, he got a thrombosis in the only other good eye and was stricken with blindness. He's a violinist. And he used to tell me that he could hear better because of his blindness. And he was able to play even more beautifully. So one evening, anticipating that he was going to be play, uh, playing at the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra, I wanted to peek my ear out of my room to see what he would be playing, to get a previews of coming attractions. And all he did was play scales. I said, Cyril, how come you weren't playing your pieces? Everything goes back to basics. Back to basics is what we need when we allow these beatitudes to well up from within us because they're coming down upon us. There's a meeting. It's like from our own, our own receptivity to God's blessings. They join in our hearts, and they become real. They become active in our own emotional, spiritual life with joy and energy, no matter what's going on in the rest of the world in hostility. If we can allow these beatitudes to take flesh inside us, it reverberates and makes more perfect and more peaceful the globe and the world that we live in. And certainly at the near in hand, the people that you see, the people one another, when we greet one another. The smile of Allison as she comes and shares the peace that she talked about earlier. All of those things do something to the soul. So let's take a look at these once again. 
I won't repeat the first one because that the poor in spirit just means we're dumbfounded because we can't answer the question. We have nothing to contribute. Throw their eye would be conceived and born in 1942. Nothing. That's really to be poor. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. The family is mourning the death of my sister-in-law's husband, who died at age 93. People are mourning his loss. But in the morning, there's comfort. There's even laughter as the people in the family gather around. We're comforted by each other's presence. Presence in silence, in laughter, in hugs, and all the things that let us know it's going to be OK. And we're people of faith. We know that this good, good man is with the Lord and continuing to bless us. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meek is not a very, very good word in English. Meek means you're kind of a patsy, meek, you know, timid, and with not a lot of energy. But the word in Greek means, praus, means something much more than meekness. It means gentleness and kindness, echoes of the gifts of Paul. But a person who is meek, they're receptive to everything. They don't focus on their own land to the exclusion of something else. If you're meek, you allow the energies of the world to pass through you and pass on. So you inherit the earth because it's yours. God gave our world to everybody. Everybody. We're all recipients. We're all owners, if you will. So if you're meek and kind and you're generous and you're joyful and all those kinds of things, you are inheriting the creation that God has for us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hunger and thirst that there be justice in the world. We hunger for it. We thirst for it. We want it to happen. We know it's not happening, but we hunger for it. And in the hunger, there is a satisfaction. It's a curious kind of thing. When we're hungry, what satisfies us is food. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you are satisfied because you're defining your life as a desire that there be justice in the world. Because the lack of justice is the first expression of violence. Apart from the violence that ensues, when there is injustice, the seeds of violence are there. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. It's kind of like a cycle. When you express mercy, it cycles around to you. The expression of being merciful gives you comfort and satisfaction, and you receive the gift of mercy itself. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. What's a pure heart? It means a heart that isn't distracted or contaminated with so many contradictory feelings and energies. Not that they don't exist, but they do. When they do, you just allow them to distill themselves. You let them to become quiet so that what you're feeling that might be at odds can just gradually gradually become distilled. It's like polishing a mirror. You know, you polish it so that you can see more clearly. When you look at your face in a mirror, no matter what you think, getting older, whatever your, your, your critique might be, you're looking, in a sense, at the face of God because God is giving you who you are. So when your heart is pure, when you're not overly self-conscious, when you're not always self-focused, then you can see the rest of the world, and the rest of the world can see you, and the face of God becomes more radiant. Blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. A peacemaker. 
you place your presence in circumstances in which you're offering peace, resolution. I'm not trying to argue conflicts or trying to figure it out, but just being there as a peacemaker by your bearing, by how you are, you allow the peace of God to flow out. Those are become children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. In recent sermons and scriptures, we've been hearing about how the early Christians, when they were persecuted and they were beaten and they were flogged and they were suffering and brought before the Sanhedrin and all that kind of thing, they rejoiced because they were found worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, utter all kinds of evil, gossip about you maybe, who knows what. Well, it doesn't matter what people say. Amen. It doesn't matter. And when you start thinking about what people might be thinking, if they don't tell you, you don't know. So it also means to stop all the little insinuations and little internal dialogues that are going on in our heart. You know, what's that person doing? What's that person? We get very confused when we do that. You just let it all go. Be blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who went before you. So all these beatitudes are beyond worldly wisdom. We just figure it out. These are pure, gratuitous gifts, and they're kind of counterintuitive. You know, merciful, receive mercy, pure, pure in heart. You know, they're, they're, they're not the way the world works. There's no achievement in them. You're not getting something when you arrive and, oh, look, I've managed to be uh, peaceful. It's a gift. You just let it come into your heart. And then when that happens, you're already in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven right now, and Matthew uses the word heaven because of his Jewish uh, center. They didn't want to re repeat the word God. So Luke and Mark, they'll talk about the kingdom of God. Matthew says the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. It's something spiritual. It's internal. It never stops. It will be culminated when it's all over. So there's a future orienting to it, but there's also the present realization that you're in heaven now. Amen. Think about that. What's it like to be in heaven when you're experiencing the effects of these beatitudes, their blessing, their gifts, nothing we can do to make them come about just as much as we couldn't make our whole life come about. Pure, gratuitous gift, full stop. When we've received that, you're in heaven. And God knows this earth needs heaven now. Lord, I pray that the violence that is going on in the world would somehow be subdued because of all the people that live out the Beatitudes, that it could touch hearts and let go of the get-backs. Mahatma Gandhi said, if we stay with an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, we'll be a blind world without any teeth. So, Lord, we just pray that we would not get caught up in tit for tat, this for that, all of the get-backs and the revenge. Just let us receive these gifts, because with these gifts, the world becomes just like heaven.
We rejoice in the Lord always, according to Paul's dictate. We thank you, Lord, that you're our God and you answer our prayers. Thank you for your love and your care. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. It makes it possible for us to call the Lord God Father and makes it possible for our prayers to be answered. This person would like to make a prayer for their best friend, Dad Richie, that he come back to us and become healthy once again. Do it, Lord. Prayers for the Nugent family. To the Nugent family, to the Aquilano family, prayer to all around us to live happy, healthy lives. Amen. We pray for Chuck who had surgery. We pray that he be able to meet all the expenses. We pray that his pain be subdued. Lord Jesus, touch him and heal him, we pray in your name. Dear Jesus, I pray that no enemy shall turn against your holy land, our Israel, we pray to you. We pray for Ernie, our dear friend Ernie, who fell as and is recovering from his injuries at home. Healing for Patrick from cancer. Healing of depression for Eric, Marion, and Diane, Lord. And giving thanks to the Lord for all of his blessings and for these healings that will take place in his holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day. As we walk today in the crop walk, we pray for all those that are hungry and especially for those that are stuck in the middle of war, hungry with no power, powerless, but they have your power, Lord. May they call upon you and receive your help. We pray for God's protection upon everyone. For those who are here today in Jesus' name, we pray for peace to the whole nation of Israel and the whole world. We pray for Henry's mom's healing. She went through minor surgery a few days ago. Pray for my father's salvation. Lord, we pray for this person's father. May you reach him wherever he is right now and fill him with your Holy Spirit and speak to him of your love. Prayers for my friend Debbie, whose husband was just put in hospice this week, Lord God. You're the friend of the friendless and the hope for the hopeless. Be with Debbie and her family and touch her husband, Lord, and give him comfort from all his ailment and pain. Prayers for protection and healing for Israel and its people again. We pray for the people in Israel again. May the Lord save them and deliver them. We pray for children who have abuse. May they heal from that abuse. We pray for people who are in domestic violence situations, Lord. Be with them and make a shield around them of your angels to protect them. Pairs of healing and recovery for co-workers, <coughs> wife, Michelle, 30 year old mother of three, who finished chemo and now is scheduled to have a double mastectomy on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Lord be with Michelle and give her courage and give her hope and give her healing, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for Shelley's grandfather injured in an accident. Lord be with him. Praying for people that people will think of others instead of themselves, Lord. Make them more like you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus died on the cross for our sins. May they adhere. And we speak the name of Jesus on these persons. My brothers and sisters, we always comfort people in their loss, but we pray for your comfort for my family as we grieve the loss of our dear brother Julio. 
We pray for my sister, Martha, and her dear nephew, my dear nephew, Alfredo, and all our family members. As we know with faith that Julio's in heaven, we still, a piece of our hearts are in heaven with him. We pray for our friend, Anne Ragone, who's hospitalized at, at UPenn, and she's 96 years old. And we pray for Beverly's brother, David. May he recover. And we pray for Brad. Lord, touch him and heal him. In Jesus' name.
and righteous God, as we bring our tithes and offerings to your altar, we confess we see ourselves as a stiff-necked Israelite in the wilderness. We are quick to lose sight of you, especially when our focus is turned in the direction of ourselves. Your anger and disappointment are so justified. As Moses intervened for the Israelites who uh, created a golden calf, okay, turning from your salvation, so Jesus had advocated for us with his very life. Help us to keep our focus as you light the pathways you would have us walk. We pray, th we pray this with gratitude for your love and in the name of your Son and our Savior. Amen. 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 We thank you, Lord, for prompting us to be here. And we ask you, Lord, that we will take you with us as soon we'll depart to a world that is hungry for love, hungry for justice, hungry for peace. We thank you for the presence of Jesus as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's joyfully sing, Great is thy faithfulness.
And now my brothers and my sisters, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of Christ Jesus. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you all and remain forever. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you. to give an update um, the women's group have you have so generously donated to the hygiene kits we were able to deliver 73 kits completed kits um, for people that are in need and it, thank you to all of you that contributed it was wonderful and um, for the crop walk today if uh, you are walking I need to meet with you out in the hallway so we can get all our envelopes in order um, and then we'll discuss when we should be back here and so forth Thank you.